So the question was, can we use global parameters in Fusion 360? And the answer is yes. But before we get to that, let me first explain what are even parameters. So parameters in Fusion 360 can be accessed through the Modify menu and the Change Parameters menu item here. And that brings up a parameter dialog. So let me close this out. So everything that shows up in that parameter dialog is basically created while you're designing. So all sketches that you, that you create use dimensions. And if you hover over with the mouse over one of those dimensions, you see D3 colon overall width. So D3 is a parameter. And that parameter references another parameter, which is a user parameter, which is overall width. Um, I think all of the dimensions, well, this one doesn't. This is just directly referencing a value. The parameter is D94, and the value of that parameter is 2.25 inches. So let me finish that sketch. And that doesn't only apply to sketches. Uh, extrude features also create parameters and any, any other features in Fusion 360. For example, that, uh, uh, that taper angle, which I'm not using here, is parameter D10, taper angle. And those parameters can be found here in the parameters pane under model parameters. And for example, here, the top plate component uses in the first sketch all these parameters. And you can also edit those here if you wish to. But in most cases, uh, such as in this design, you want to define your own parameters that you can easily access without having to dig through all these model parameters. And those are called user parameters or user defined parameters. And I've defined a bunch of them here in this computer desk and made one of them a favorite. And the reason why I'm making a favorite is because I'm going to use a specific feature of the derived functionality that works with favorites. So in this case, it's the top plate thickness. And it's three quarters of an inch. Now let's assume I want to use that um, that parameter, and um, hang on, before I get to that, all these parameters that I've shown here are local, meaning they're only accessible through this particular design. And they only are valid in this particular design. <clears throat> if I want to use any of these parameters in another design, I can derive those into that design. So let's do this. In order to do this in this case, I'm going to make the top plate thickness a favorite, and then I'm going to create a derived feature. Now first, I need to save this design. And then here's the derived pane, and I want to derive that um, parameter into an existing design. I've also designed a shelving system to go along with this, with this desk, and I want the board thickness, the plywood thickness, um, to be the same as the top plate thickness here. So I'm going to select add that to an existing design. And down here, I can expand the parameters uh, item here. And I select favorites and click on OK. And now the dialog presents me with the, the file dialog here. So I can pick the design. I want to derive that dimension into or that parameter. And that's the TV stand. I select that. And that's the TV stand. Uh, it's a bit of a bigger TV stand. And if I open the parameters pane here, that parameter that we derived comes from the computer desk and from a user parameter. And that user parameter is top plate thickness, ref. So here my plywood thickness is 0.75 inches. And I can now top reference that, oops. Well, looks like. I have to make that escape 0.75 and make that a favorite. And then I can reference that here. OK, so now if I change the thickness of the top plate here in this design. This design will become out of date. I get this yellow warning icon here, then I have to click it and it updates the thickness of these plates or the plywood thickness with, with that parameter. But I suggest that's not the best workflow because it's very easy to get lost what you have derived into which design. So 
I suggest a different workflow. Let's get to that. So for this demonstration, I've created uh, a master parameters list. Let me open this. And that master parameters list is basically an empty design. There's only um, an origin in here, but no geometry, no features in the timeline. And there are only parameters. And as, as I mentioned before, the user defined parameters and I've made those favorites so I can derive those into other designs. So I have a number of designs here, like the pyramid, the cylinder, and the cube that I have derived those parameters into using the dialog that I showed earlier. So if I open any of those, we can see that the length and the diameter uh, are derived parameters. And if I want to change that here in the master, um, in the master parameters, I can do that. So something I can't do, I cannot insert that cylinder into the master parameters list. It will try and that's kind of weird, but it gives me this error message here that there's a cyclic dependency and, and that's not allowed. So that's the reason for this master parameters list that's basically empty. It really just serves to keep the parameters. But I've also created an assembly and that assembly contains the cylinder, it contains the cube, and then it contains a sub assembly, which is another assembly of a cube and the pyramid and the cylinder. And they're all linked into this particular design. So if I now go ahead and change this value, let's say we make that 60 and we make that 70, click okay and save the design. And then we go back to our assembly design. You can see that this assembly design has gone out of date. And um, if I click on this out of date icon, everything should update. And we can see all these here changing. And in order to make that change permanent, I have to save the design. And look at what happens here in, in the data panel when I click on save here. Basically, all the designs, the, the cube, the assemblies, the sub-assemblies that use these derived parameters are also saved. So if I open up the pyramid, for example, we can see that it uses this uh, updated value from the master parameter list. So there's really no need to open each individual design and open it uh, and update it on its own. That is all done automatically when you update the assembly that this component is used in and then save that assembly. So hopefully this helps.